What's up guys, Bingo here, and today I'm going to do the in-depth version of my Magical Musketeer deck profile. Uh, if you guys ha don't know, if you want to see just the deck profile without the long-winded explanation of why I choose cards, there'll be a link in the description where I just go through the cards and that's it, so you don't have to watch me run my mouth. Uh, I'm going to be going over the main deck, the extra deck, and then cards to consider when building this deck, uh, as well as alternative ways to uh, structure the main deck. Uh, first off, Magical Musketeer Caspar. Uh, obviously, it's been the heart and soul of the deck as, since it came out. It's kind of the best one. Um, the problem with this deck is uh, all the monsters are really small. It's normal summon reliant. So if this gets impermanence on your first turn, of the, like if it just gets negated, all of the bullets are dead in your hand. But Max really does help out with that, um, which Max is a broken card, but we'll get to that later. Um... It, it, I'm not going to go too much into the just actual magical muskets themselves uh, because if you're watching this, you know what they do, and I don't need to explain that. Dock, some people play Dock in two. I think it's uh, after turn two, uh, turn one or turn two. Like this is this is better than Caspar because you've already gone through your cross dominations. Maybe you burned your one of steady hand, and Dock is what lets you loop infinitely. Uh, being able to resolve Dock, Caspar and like starfire every turn like it just gets crazy once this deck sets up it's really hard to it's really hard for your opponent to play because you got you have a pop a spell trap negation a effect veiler that makes your opponent's attack zero as well as like pseudo uh, battle protection with cross domination um but kid brave it's just the other level three um, I think it's pretty good. It does conflict with another card in here a little bit, but you just need a card to summon off of Ties of the Brethren, which I'm sure you assume I was playing. Um, it, you have a lot of discard targets for it. It's uh, the biggest just normal summon out of all the level threes. It's at uh, 1600, which, again, that's one of the problems with the deck is it does struggle to just kill your opponent. Like, yeah, you might be able to grind them out of uh, plays like you might stop all their plays between your negations and uh, your pops, but you still have to kill them. Uh, three Starfire. Uh, I see some people playing less than three, and I just don't understand why. Because if you don't see Caspar, like your engine's not live because you're not searching your bullets. Uh, yeah, you can hard open the right ones, but if you don't, you you're not going to be able to advance your strategy, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, so Starfire is just a normal summon, assuming you have a spell you can burn underneath her, you can get Caspar. Now I'm trying to play enough burner spells, and what I mean by that is just stuff you can play um, for no reason and get a search. Because if you summon Caspar, cool, but you need to trigger him as well. So you really need Starfire plus two spells, and that's when it gets a little bit awkward. So you can, if you don't open right, you can struggle. Um, and you definitely can't go second with this deck. Um, now, if you're not playing through many interruptions, yeah, you can go second. But it's definitely, you want to go first and you want to just have the right cards. So it's not the strongest deck in the world, but it is a very fun deck to play. It could really mess with your opponent. Um, but after that, we're playing one Wild and one Calamity. So before Max came out, we weren't playing these cards. And that's because... You never really wanted to dedicate a normal summon to them. Uh, you couldn't summon them off Ties of the Brethren. So it was really weird. The only way to get them out before was really keep uh, Starfire on field and then summon them afterwards. But at that point, your opponent's not dealing with your resources, so you're probably in a winning position. So you didn't even need them. Uh, now they open up interesting lines of play, but there are, there are different names that you can summon off of Max uh, if your opponent has a couple spell and traps and you don't want to search the bullets. Uh, and they're, they're just decent cards. Um, so he's Pot of Avarice. For those of you that don't know, uh, if he cards activated in his column, he can sh shuffle three Magical Musket cards from the graveyard back to the deck, draw one. He does have to shuffle back all three targets, unlike a couple of other cards in the game. And then Calamity Special Summons from Graveyard in Defense Position, um, which, I mean, it's not a bad effect. Uh, it's definitely a recovery option. Um, 
But that's it for the Magical Musket Monsters. Uh, outside of that, we are playing just one other monster, and that is Triple Phantasme. Uh, you lose to stuff that shuts off your engine. And for your engine to be live, you need bullets in hand, as well as a non-negated effect uh, on the field. So a monster like Caspar, Starfire, where their effect is live. Because if they just open their turn with impermanence or one monster, you, you kind of lose. So... Yeah, they can still do that, but at least you have some sort of targeting protection for af uh, later in the turn where they're going to be wanting to targeting your monsters to negate the effects. Also, it lets you fix your hand because you need the right pieces of the puzzle to get this deck going. And like I said, once it does get going, it's freaking really hard to break. But in the meantime, you want to you want to protect yourself and this really helps you it's 2400 it's bigger than all of your main deck monsters by a large margin um and then if you can't summon off of max which does happen because a lot of decks aren't playing a lot of spell and trap so maybe you'll get one or two and if you're playing against a back row deck max is probably not resolving so most of the time you're going to be searching spell and trap off of him but uh that's the only hand trap we've played i've considered ash i've considered uh impermanence i've considered a lot of things but that's the only one i've stuck with um i don't really have any true drago players or like guru control by me so i never really get burned by main deck in that card but uh i i think it's a fair enough meta to do that so uh, onto the spell and traps we're playing three cross domination by far the best uh magical musket spell and trap shout out to friggin tcg player who uh, you always get one euro print out of three it's really annoying but um, this card, this card's amazing. This card's artwork is honestly the reason why, why I like this deck or why I wanted to play it, uh, way back when it first came out. Uh, this is, this is just really good. It's really scary to play around this card if you're low on, if your opponent's low on resources because they can't attack into anything because they're just going to kill themselves, their effects are negated. Uh, it, it's just a really, really strong card. And then the only other Magical Musketeer spell card we're playing is one of Steady Hands. I've seen some lists play too. Uh, it's completely not necessary at two because Dot can recycle it. Um, wor like worst case scenario, uh, Wild can s recycle it back into the deck and you can search off Caspar or Max. Um, it's just good utility. What sucks is it restricts you from attacking directly. And that that is a big, big problem because you're really trying to kill them. Uh, and then three auto win button, Ties of the Brethren. This is still a, if you can resolve this card, Go, uh, turn one going first you're probably going to win unfortunately after that it becomes a lot harder to resolve it but um this has just been a staple since the deck came out now i'm not playing archfiend eccentric or any other targets to summon off of this or i'm not playing any level four light fiends i'm just sticking to the game plan shout outs to triff gaming i'm just sticking to what this deck is trying to do establish multiple magical musketeers make it awkward for your opponent to play and just start looping your negations and your uh, interruptions. Uh, this deck hard loses to hand trap sometimes, so we're playing three called by the grave. It's extremely good. If you don't need it for a hand trap, it's good disruption. Set it behind something that was summoned off ties. Set it behind kid brave, worst case. Um, and we're playing one upstart goblin. It is the freest burner spell. Um, and then we're playing three pot of extravagance. I think this is the best way to play the deck. Um, it's free draw two. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. You can't utilize the trigger off going first because you have to activate this first before you do anything else. But after that, uh, turn two, turn three, you're not always going to draw this. But if you top deck into it, it feels pretty good. Uh, it conflicts with Kid Brave a little bit. Um, before I was playing Extravagance, I was playing uh, Desires, and then I was playing like Foolish Burial Goods as a free spell. Um, so this is this is not where I want to leave the deck, but I do think drawing two for free in this deck where you need a lot of cards to... Uh, you don't need a lot of cards to play, but to play well, you need more cards than a lot of decks out there. So that's why I'm playing this. And then onto the trap cards, we're playing three Magical Musket Last Stand. Uh, you can get in some pretty, some pretty good uh, game states with this. Like there was a build I was playing Judgment. And I was going against a control deck, and then it was like, I judgment, and he judgments my judgment, and then I last stand his judgment. So uh, this is just a good card. Any uh, negates the activation, destroys the card. 
uh, spell speed three, can't respond to it, and it's a hand trap. Like that's pretty crazy when you think about it. That a counter trap can be activated from your hand. Uh, that's why red reboot's so powerful. Uh, and then we're playing three desperado. We want to max out on all the interruptive, uh, the nine interruptive ones being three desperado, three last stand, and three cross domination. Everything else is just utility that you can search off max as a one of. You can search off cast bar if you already have access to everything else. And then for the other traps, we're playing one Dancing Needle, one Crooked Crown, and one Fiendish Deal. So Dancing Needle is, it can be extremely, extremely good. I, since this card is searchable off max, and obviously you've always been able to search off Caspar, but because that's a card and you can search multiple names in one turn, uh, even if, if they got three monsters, that's, that's three free searches. And uh, Triple DD Crow is pretty good. Crooked Crown is like double summon on crack. Uh, you can just spell like one problem that this deck had before this card came out is that you were basically just normal summon and I hope this monster gets me there. Uh, this card being searchable off max means you don't have to play more than one of it and you get a lot of you you get a lot of utility off of it because between your dock recycles and all of your summons, like you actually have some decent swarm. Uh, potential but uh, you you're still very reliant on your normal summon because you have to maintain a magical musket on the field and then fiendish deal uh, I'm iffy about this one right now because destruction's not too prevalent but it's it's still a good card and it's one slot I'm testing it out I'm seeing how I like it and it's searchable uh, it like if max just searched one card I wouldn't play this but because I can search Crooked Crown, Desperado, uh, Cross Domination, all with the same effect. Like, that's where it becomes really good. Uh, just having that extra. And, and remember, all these are like spell speed two, and you can play them from your hand. So, just them being trap cards isn't really relevant because you can just slap them, slap them down on the table, banish. Oh, this this destroys Sky Striker. It's so nice. Um, Salomon Great. Uh, it like Dancing Needle is just really good disruption because remember DD Crow was such a prevalent card in the format. The format's basically the same, so Triple DD Crow is pretty good by my book. And guys, that's it for the main deck. On to the extra deck. Obviously, you're playing Extravagance, so we're going to be playing a lot more of cards than you normally would. But this is a deck that doesn't utilize the extra deck that much because you're just trying to play the control game with your main deck monsters and max. So we're gonna max out on that on the off, like I've never banished through this. I've never banished three Herald of Arclight off of uh, when I'm playing Necroz. You're not gonna banish three, like statistically, yes, it's possible, but it's not gonna happen. Um, we were playing one security dragon. Uh, this is the only card in here that I don't have multiples of that I would play multiple. I would play two of this if I had it being a like, let's say you get a good summon off of Max. Uh, Max having a downward pointing arrow, being able to bounce a card for free, and then climb into Boral Sword and kill them because you just summon three monsters from your deck, which is just ridiculous. Um, so I would play this at two if you have it. I just really haven't gotten around to ordering one. Uh, two Phoenix, uh, great utility. Get a draw off Musk, uh, Max for popping a card. Uh, two Cerberus. Uh, it's kind of the same idea. I know Cerberus isn't the best card because it has to be the main monster though and it has to be a special summon monster. But it points up. It's a generic. It helps you climb into uh, Avermax if you really need it. Uh, and we're playing two Unicorn. Uh, again, just good utility that you want to have if you need it. You'll have games where you don't summon anything besides Max because you're just controlling the board at your own, your own pace. So... Uh, and then we're playing two Avermax. Uh, this card is just a pain in the butt for anything to deal with. Uh, and, like, this deck is no exception. Like, if you're playing against an Avermax, you need the next card to play through it because you can't do anything about it. You can't spin it. You can't target it with any of your cards. And your only out to that card is actually another card that I don't have two of. This is Borlo Dragon. So I would play two of this, but instead, since I really don't want to buy a second one until like Dual Devastator comes out or Rocket Structure Deck, I'm um, playing Ball Sword Dragon. Just as good, you know, it deals with mostly the same issues. And then since I don't have a second Security Dragon, uh, Phantom Knights of Breaksword, 
it actually has been doing a lot more than I thought it would because it's just good. You just clear a card. Uh, I know you have Phoenix and Unicorn, but sometimes you don't want to discard a card. And at least, like, Break Sword is 2,000. Uh, normally, attack points don't matter in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? It's all about the effects. But when all of your monsters are 1,700 or less on the main deck, like, you really need some way to get through all these cards. All right, so I'm going on to the cards I would consider when deck building. Uh, Infinite Impermanence. This card, uh, the Column effect specifically, it is very interesting when you're combining this with Ties of the Brethren because all the Magical Musketeers, your opponent's not going to play spell cards in the same column, but you can set this in a column that they're not in, so now you're just locking down four or five of their columns so no matter what they play in you're going to be able to respond and interact with in some way um i just i, I opted to play phantasmas instead of this and that was the only difference so maybe that'll go back to it uh world legacy awakens i just don't like cards that don't do anything immediately um link summoning on your opponent's turn is cool but it's a strict neg one uh if your opponent interrupts the max uh because if you're Waiting this, waiting on this to get maximum value where you're getting more than a plus one, then your opponent's probably going to have some form of interruption and you're just going to... It's just like a, a, a card that could have done something else before you even resolved it. And it's not a Magical Musket card, so you can't activate it during your turn without setting it the previous turn. And it's, it's just a little bit too slow. Now, when it works, it's awesome because you can just summon... Like, if you end phase Awakens against a trap deck... You can max for, like, summon five monsters from your deck. Like, that's just, that's just crazy. But, um, so that's it for the trap cards I would consider. Monster Reborn is just a good burner card that you can activate and get value out of and then get additional value from your Magical Musket cards. And it, it can really swing tempo depending on what's engraved. Uh, if it is a grind game and it's a top deck. But it just, it does nothing going first. And I want to maximize... The efficiency by even if i have to minimize the power a little bit because monster reborn it is a power card you top deck it and it does something and it swings the game in your tempo but if you open with it, it just is pretty lackluster so i want to maximize the efficiency of the deck that i'm playing uh really good going second cards mind control it just it's a spell you can activate that does something impactful um and triggers your Magical Musketeer cards. Uh, Instant Fusion with Thousand Eyes Restrict. This is this was in a pretty much every build I was playing of this deck before Max came out, and it's just really good. It's basically the same idea as my, uh, Mind Control, except it gives you a little more value because you get the spell activation, and then you get uh, you take their monster, and you can get rid of it without linking off one of your Magical Musketeer cards because. With Mind Control, you're in this awkward position where you're a normal summon deck, and if you don't have access to the new trap card, the uh, uh, Crooked Crown, this one, if you don't have access to that, you're not going to be able to get another Magical Musketeer on board before you can link it off. So being able to Thousand Eyes, take it, make Link Karibo, and have that protection from Link Karibo as well as still maintaining your board state is pretty good. Uh, Super Poly and the targets it's it's just a good card sometimes you have you do have a hard time breaking boards in this deck so if you're going second you don't really utilize the extra deck so if you want to play two mud dragon two starving venom or if you're not playing extravagance with one 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 and then maybe uh violet chimera like it, it's a very good card and then another like power play rather than uh, consistency is Tune Table. This was experimented with way back. So if you normal summon Starfire, activate Tune Table, you summon Caspar, activate Tune Table, search your other card. Like it can be very impactful. Uh, it just opens up your you're a lot less consistent because you can open double Tune Table, Tune Cyber Dragon, and then you get one activation, and you better have a Magical Musket in hand. Uh, Cyber Dragon, if you're playing this, I would 100% play uh, Mega Fleet Dragon because then it gives you that cons that interrupt, not interruption, but the way to break boards. You can take their Link Monster and fuse away with it uh, because, again, you're not really using the extra deck. Uh, another going second card, uh, Mystic Mine. Obviously, I would never play this as a going second card, but consider siding through these because 
if they have a board, you can just slap this on the table, summon your magical muskets, and then just go from there. And then that combos very nicely with the next cards in here. Uh, Utopia, Utopia Double, uh, Double or Nothing, and Lightning. So if you have Mystic Mine on the field and you can max for uh, like two monsters, if you can get two summons off of Magical Musketeer Max or even a search and then like you just get Starfire um, and Crooked Crown or, or something that's two ways to get level four, you're threatening lethal with uh, these at all times because you are... As long as they have a monster with 2,000 or less attack, which a lot of the decks do, you are threatening lethal and they can't use their effects. As long as by the time you get there, you have less monsters than they do. So um, this 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 is an engine I really do want to play in this deck, um, but I don't want to play it with extravagance because to guarantee that it's always online, because since you have to dedicate main deck space to it uh, with the double or nothing, you want to make sure that it's always live. So you'd have to play three Utopia, three Utopia double, and then I just wouldn't play this. So between that, three max, and then a couple other utility cards, you have a lot less likelihood to have what you need. Um, but honestly, if I do cut Extravagance, I'm playing this for sure because it just threat it threatens lethal in a deck that shouldn't be able to, and that is why I like it so much. But guys, if you have enjoyed, this has been my... Magical Musketeer in-depth deck profile. Uh, if you've enjoyed the content, if you want to check out other videos on the channel, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let's talk about the deck. I don't. It's not the deck I play the most. It's not the deck that I have the most uh, experience with. So if you know something I don't, please let me know. Uh, remember to check out our Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast we do every Monday. It goes up on iTunes, Google Play at 8 o'clock in the morning every Monday. And it goes on YouTube at 10 a.m. every Monday. Um, it's called X2 Drop. But with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.